this challenge, I'll introduce real-time video in Scratch from a computer camera such as a webcam or a laptop camera. I'll create a simple game where when I make enough movement behind the Gobo sprite, the sprite will move to a new location on the stage. I won't need the cat. Delete the cat. New sprite. Fantasy. Choose Gobo. I'll use some new commands. Go to Sensing. To use the video, I'll have to turn it on. I want to know when there's motion behind the sprite, and I can adjust how much visibility there is to the video camera on the stage. I'll enable the monitor for this variable. I'll check it. I always want to start by turning on the video. I'll go to Events. When a green flag is clicked, turn on the video. I'll move the variable to the middle. I can look at Block Help for Turn On Video. Block Help. It turns the video camera on. I'll run the program now. Click the green flag. There, I'm visible. My webcam controller is visible now. I'll remove it. I'll move Gobo down some, so he's not right in the middle of my face. I can look at Help for Set Video Transparency. Go to Block Help. Set Video Transparency. It takes a number from 0 to 100. The higher the number, the more transparent the background is, the less you see of it. I can look at Block Help for Video Motion. Block Help. Video Motion. I can sense how much motion there is behind a sprite or the stage. I'll only use the video motion behind the sprite. I'll move behind the sprite. You can see the numbers are changing a lot getting pretty large too. Stop. Numbers are small. Move some more. A lot of motion. If I move Gobo up here, you can see there isn't quite as much motion. I find that simpler backgrounds do better than more complicated backgrounds. Move it back. Easier to see the movement. I can close the help and click on video motion. Only a value of zero. I'll move behind it, click again. Now I get a bigger number, 55, sometimes zero. Not the best of samples, here I'll move a lot. 61. No movement. Be very small numbers. I can change the transparency on the stage. If I change it to zero, run it. Now the video isn't masked at all. I can change the value to 100, and the video is gone. I'll leave it like this for a while, a lot less distracting. Scratch is still sensing movement. If I move my hand under where Govo is, the numbers change a lot can even see 100 in there. If I don't move, very little change. I always want the video transparency to 50%. Duplicate. I'll attach that. 50%. How would you make code to move the Gobo sprite if there was enough movement under it? First I'll remove video motion from the stage. Sensing. Video motion is not checked. I'll see if it'll still disappear. Oh good, it does. A little problem with Scratch. I want Gobo to be a little smaller. I'll go to Looks. Set size to 75%. Run it. Smaller now. Good. I want a new block to set the new location. More blocks. Make a block. I'll call it New Location. OK. I want to move Gobo. Drop that down. Always run this when the green flag is clicked. Go to Motion. Go to. I want to pick a random location. Operators. Pick random. Pick random for X. I'll get one for Y. What will be a good range for X? Move Gobo and drop them. It's about a negative 205. I'll make it a minus 200. To positive 200. Now for the Y value, 
drop them down about there. Minus 140, that'll work. And a positive 140. Good. See how this works. Click on it. New location, nice. Like his costume to change. Go to costumes. Gogo has three different costumes, different facial expressions. I don't have to choose names. I can also use the costume numbers. Back to scripts. Duplicate. I can use a random number. Go to looks. Switch costume to random number one to three. Now one, two, or three will be chosen. That'll match the costume number. We'll run it some more. You can see some different faces. When Gobo's on the right side of the stage, I'd like Gobo to point to the left side instead of facing off stage. I'll go to control, if else. Go to operators, less than. If the X position is less than zero, go to motion. Scroll down, X position. If the X position is less than zero, I want to point to the right. Point in direction. 90 degrees should be to the right. It is. I'll duplicate. Else, it's on the right side of the stage. I want to point to the left. I'll see how this works. Run it. Well, he's pointing to the left, but upside down. I need to set the rotation style. Do that as initialization. I can run it right now. Rotation style left-right is good. Try this a few times. Looks good. If there's enough video movement under the Gobo sprite, I want it to move to a new position. After it's set its first position, I'll need a loop forever. Have it keep checking the value of the motion underneath the sprite. I'll use an if, duplicate. I don't need x position. If the movement underneath the sprite is greater than, try 35. I'll move size to initialization. Always want to set the size to 75. Now when the video motion under the sprite is greater than 35, it can set the new location, make the call. More blocks, new location. I'll try it now. Stop, run with the green flag. It's running now. Move underneath him, and he moves. And moving away quite nicely. Try to catch them. Here it's hard to see the movement in this background. If I have Gobo behind the black shirt, where it's nice and simple black, move detects it immediately. It's harder to see the movement on complicated backgrounds. If you're going to want to play with the video a lot, it would be helpful to have a simple background behind you. I'll stop the program now. Change the transparency to 100. Now you're not seeing me anymore, and I'll stop it. When this program runs, it's spending a lot of effort checking and checking and checking whether the video motion value is greater than 35. This is called polling or busy wait. The program is polling as fast as it can, checking and checking and checking. It's like checking your phone for new messages thousands of times a second. How many times do you think it would check the video motion value in about five seconds? I'll find out how fast it goes on my computer. Data, make a variable, call it count. OK, move it to the center, initialize it to zero, change the count by one every time it goes through the loop. I'll try it, stop. When I run it, I count for about five seconds, watch the counter. Again, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. Stop it. Okay. Turn off transparency. That's over a million. In five seconds, it checked the value more than a million times. That's a lot of effort being spent not getting anything done. This polling is very inefficient. 
instead of polling, my program can be told when the video motion is greater than 35. Go to Events, when loudness for now, when video motion greater than 35, duplicate, don't need this loop now. Move this over. Now when the program runs, count will be set to zero, but count won't be changed. Forever loop is not attached to the handler. And now when the video motion is greater than 35, new location will be called. I'm ready to try this to see if it works. Make sure it's stopped. Run. There we go. And I'll move behind Gobo. There's that. There we go. Easier on a black background. And he's moving all around. <laughs> I'll stop it. And change the transparency. It's interesting that the video background didn't stop when I clicked on stop. I clicked on set video transparency to 100%. The video went away, but the handler is still running. As I move around here, I can actually get Gobo to still move, even though I've stopped the program. You can't see me when I've been moving, but this video motion is still handling events. Earlier, this loop was very busy checking and checking for values. With a million checks in about five seconds, you can see how it can slow a computer down. Now without the loop and only this handler, my program is idle and responds only when an event occurs. It's much more efficient. It's best to avoid polling when possible. There are times when polling is necessary, but this wasn't one of them. I'm finished with this challenge. I encourage you to play with the program, make it comfortable using video motion, and understanding the idea of polling versus callback with event handlers. Try changing the program. Try keeping the largest video motion value seen. Try making a real challenging change. Try generating new locations, but only use the new location if it's far enough away from the current location. But above all, have fun with the program. <laughs>